We have now covered the first two sections of the Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle. By this point, you'll have hopefully implemented measures as identified in the action plan and to within your timescale in order to achieve your targets. The next part of the process is checking. This means demonstrating that you've actually made the improvements and met your planned targets. Measurement of energy performance is one of the key processes within ISO 50001. Measurement takes many different forms. For example, using metered utility data or degree day data to develop an energy baseline are both forms of measurement even though you may not have physically taken a measurement yourself. Ways of physically taking a measurement include submetering and perhaps even using a sample size. The development of this metering plan will have been part of your action planning. It is important that the data you collect is credible. When developing your energy baseline, make sure that you do not fill in any missing data as this will form the benchmark for your future activities. If in doubt, wait for a longer period to obtain suitable data. Working out how much data to collect can be tricky. To some extent, this will be decided by your budget, particularly if you take on a lot of temporary submetering. If you're not using utility data, you'll need to strike a balance between the amount of metering you do and the expected accuracy of your results. Data need not only be restricted to utility data. Other factors such as number of employees, hours of operation, number of production lines, the amount of IT equipment, computers and plug-in loads used, and even the floor area and occupancy of your building could all be important. This is because changes to any of these could affect your energy consumption. When you come to making like-for-like -like comparisons, you will need to take this into account. For example, let's imagine that your energy consumption had increased unexpectedly. You might find that the operations team had doubled their production capacity to meet the Christmas demand, masking any energy performance improvement. Any significant deviation of energy performance must be recorded and corrective action may be applied. Finally, bear in mind that the measurements you took when developing the energy baseline are likely to be the same as those taken to assess your performance improvement. Make sure from the outset that the items you measure are appropriate for what you are trying to do and that you take measurements over a long enough period of time to capture a full energy cycle. And don't forget that this part of the process is essential for demonstrating your activities to an internal or external body. So document the process fully, including any assumptions you may have made. The final part of the PDCA cycle is ACT. This means acting on any non-conformity or deviations from the expected result. It also means undertaking a management review of the whole process. The management review need not only occur at the end of the process. Top management is expected to review and record the status of the energy management system to ensure it's working effectively and to provide any corrective measures. This might involve committing additional resources or training to get the energy management system back on track. Once the review is complete, new targets can be set for continual performance improvement. Again, new legislation such as better indoor air quality could affect the energy review. This means that you may need to develop new targets and measures and update the energy review. After this, you are ready to develop and implement a new action plan. Again, you will need to take measurements to determine the energy baseline and any improvements that are made. 
Results should be analysed and any corrective action undertaken. And so continues the cycle of improvement and ongoing certification to ISO 50001. So what do you need to do to get started? Well, firstly, you need to have top management commitment. Senior management have to be on board and have to want to save energy and money. If it's all about lip service, then when it comes to the crunch and providing resources, the lack of commitment will be apparent and your ENMS will not come to fruition. Top management should be willing to demonstrate this publicly, whether through organisational communication or developing and signing the energy policy. It is also important to have the right people, skills, technology and financial resources on hand. The management representative who reports to top management need not be a permanent or full-time employee of the organisation, but they do need to have the skills and expertise to deliver ISO 50001. However, Everyone working on significant energy uses must be competent to do this. We understand that ISO 50001 is fairly new and gaining the right skills and experience in-house may be difficult. You may need to implement specific training for the role. An energy team may be assigned to support the delivery within an organisation. If you have a corporate social responsibility or sustainability team, you may already have the skills and staff available. If expertise is lacking, you could also consider additional training or using external resources, for example, in the assessment of significant energy uses and the development of an energy review. There is also a growing wealth of support that can be found on the internet including the BSI website, US Department of Energy website and Sustainable Energy Authority Ireland website.